five rules. Number one, you've got to have a system for success. Number two, you've got to focus on the process, not the outcome. Number three, it's who you have to become, not how to create it. Number four, it's why you want it, not what you want. And finally, number five. I won't waste another minute, no, I won't. I'm a man on a mission. I'm a man on a mission. I don't need no permission. I'm a man on a mission. Welcome to Entitled to Nothing, where we believe our life is our fault. My name is Mink, and I've spent the last 20 years of my life running headfirst into failure after failure. And I've learned how to turn my failures into lessons, and I've used those lessons to create life on my terms. Have you ever wondered what makes someone successful and what makes someone else not successful? What is the difference between those that have the most success, that have the best life, that start the best businesses, and everybody else. Something I've thought about a lot in my life as an entrepreneur and really just as an individual trying to find his way in the world. And what I can tell you is there is a, you know, th there's this whole idea of the secret of success and you have to do this and you have to do that. And I don't think that there is any one way to be successful but there is first principles. There's overarching rules. And today what I wanna do is share with you guys five rules I've learned on my journey from going from broke and bankrupt to earning over $50 million in sales as an entrepreneur. And I tell you guys that number not to impress you, but to express to you that I have found a way to create some success in my life. And in the modern world, for whatever reason, one of the number one ways of uh, value, not valuing, but measuring success is from a monetary standpoint, right? Especially in the entrepreneurial world. And so I sat down and I wrote this really long post about success and what has to happen and what you have to do and the principles and some of the character traits and some of the things that you have to have. And I tried to record this episode a couple of times, honestly, and I wasn't, it just wasn't feeling right. And ultimately, uh, I condensed it down into five rules. And today I just wanna share these five rules with you. I wanna have a candid conversation about it. And then at the end of the talk, I'm gonna tell you a couple of takeaways and how you can start to apply these to your life. So the first rule of success is, and well, let me, before I even go there, let me start and say, these are not uh, definitive in the sense that there's a whole lot of other things that you have to do. And when I say number one, it's not like this is the most important thing. One of the things you guys will learn about me is I don't believe in absolutes. There's a few absolutes in life, but most, most exist in this gray space, right? Between the black and the white. And I personally think that we get ourselves into trouble when we try to be too rigid about things, but I do believe there's first principles. And that's really what I'm talking about here with these five rules of success. And so it's not that one is more important than another. It's just a list of one to five. So the first uh, principle that I think we all must follow if we wanna have more success in our life is this. Success is built by repeatable systems. Okay, I think it was one of those famous philosophers, Aristotle, that said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an, uh, it's not an act, but it's a habit, okay? And so often, we want to focus on the end goal and we're so focused on you know, getting the job, starting the business, getting the car, whatever the end destination is, that we don't really think about the process that it's gonna take to get there. And one of the things that I've learned is the quality of our systems is gonna determine the, the, the level of success that we have. And oftentimes I think about it like this, I wanna create repeatable systems that create predictable success. And there's a lot of very simple examples of this, right? I grew up playing basketball, I love basketball, and doing thousands of form shots every single day in the gym developed a repeatable process so that when I got in a game, I became more successful. And as a short white dude in a small town in Oregon, I earned myself a college basketball scholarship because I developed a process of shooting thousands and thousands of form shots 
that ultimately created a predictable result of free throws or three-pointers or jump shots or whatever it is, right? But if you think about grilling a steak, if you think about, there's so many examples of this, right? But maybe a simple one is baking a cake, right? If you have a recipe that has been passed down for generations and it's the most decadent, most delicious cake you've ever had in your life, could you have the same success baking that cake as the original creator of it? And the answer is yes, if you follow the process, also known as a recipe, right? And if you're gonna follow a process or a recipe, you have to know what ingredients you need in what proportions they need to be used in and in what order they need to be mixed into the bowl. Because if you get the wrong ingredients or you get the wrong quantity of ingredients, and sometimes if you put them in the wrong order, you're not gonna create the same result. And so when you think about you know, what is it that makes people successful? I would challenge you guys to think about it like this. They've discovered repeatable systems that produce uh, predictable success. And so as you're, as you're analyzing, how do I become more successful in any area of my life? The first thing that I really want you to think about is what systems do I need to create? What activities do I need to do habitually day in and day out that are gonna produce a predictable result? right? Fitness is another very simple example of this. If you want to get stronger, if you want to lose weight, it's not rocket science. You've got to figure out a particular workout, a particular system, and you've got to do it over and over and over. So the first rule of success is creating predictable systems that produce repeatable or predictable success. And this brings me to an interesting point. The only reason why you're not having the success that you want in any area of your life is two things. Number one, you don't know the system. Or number two, you're just not doing it. And oftentimes, if we're really honest with ourselves, we know what we need to do. We just don't have the discipline or the courage or the consistency to actually do it. And so what I wanna do as a friend uh, here on this podcast is challenge you to go find the system and just fucking do it. Just have the discipline, have the courage, have the consistency. And I do think that this is the foundation of success. If you can find the system. All right. Rule number two, this one is the process is more important than the outcome. Okay. So often when we get started, all we care about is the outcome, the goal, the desire. I want the house. I want the girl. I want the business, right? And it's critical that we know what we want. But what I will tell you from experience is the only way we're really going to get what we want is by focusing our energy on the process. And this is why it's step number two, because number one, you got to know what that process is. And then step number or step number one is you got to know what the process is. And step number two is you got to then focus all your energy on it. And one of the things that I learned early on, like when I first got started, I was just a young puppy dog trying to find my way in the world. And all I cared about was making a certain amount of money so that I could move to the beach and live a certain lifestyle. And I didn't give a shit about process and all this other bullshit. I was like, give me the outcome. I want the goal. And what I realized is that was a very amateur approach to life, right? Amateurs only care about the outcome. And that's why they very rarely get it, okay? Professionals, if you're a true professional, you know what your outcome is, you know what you want, but you understand that the only way you're gonna get from where you are to where you wanna go is by, is by uh, delivering or executing the process. And so a professional is gonna say, okay, I want the goal, but in order to get there, I have to do all of these steps and I have to find a system and I have to work it and I have to take consistent action repeatedly over time. One of my favorite quotes is, ordinary things practiced consistently create extraordinary results. And if you want extraordinary results, you have to become a professional in any area of your life that you're trying to generate results, and you need to do those ordinary things consistently over time. And the most boring, basic, ordinary things, that's going to be the process. The day in and day out grind at times, monotonous work that we have to do. No one's immune from it, right? There's a silly saying and it says, no one can do your push-ups for you, right? Every day you got to show up and just trust the process. 
engage in the process. And if you do it long enough, you'll get to the end destination. You'll achieve that outcome, you know? And, you know, I just had this, l- let me finish this thought first and then I'll tell you the little antidote or an anecdote. Um, the, so if amateurs focus on the outcome, professionals are, f- they know what their outcome is and they're really, really uh, clear on it and they're focused on the process. I think you elevate to mastery in, in the, any area of your life when you're more focused on becoming a master of the process than even the outcome, right? I think there's a point in our career or in our lives where we actually fall more in love with the process than we even do about the outcome. And we know like when you become a professional and you are focused on the process and you can now learn how to to create the results that you want, there's this, there's this migration that happens. If you do it long enough, you become a true master of your craft. And that's where you really fall in love with the process. And so as you think about this, I want you to use this framework, amateur professional master, right? And I want you to judge yourself. And let's say, you know, in your relationship, in your fitness, in your career, are you an amateur? Are you a professional? Or are you a master? And I think if you can think about that framework, um, you can kind of give yourself a, a, a score, if you will, or you can judge yourself against this, rate yourself, and determine where you need to focus. If you're an amateur, you're focusing solely on the outcome. If you're a professional, you know what you want and you're really clear on it, but you're you're focused on the process. And a master is just focused on getting becoming a true master of craft. Um, I had this experience recently where I was just in Hawaii for a couple of weeks and I'll make a long story short. I ended up renting a house in Hawaii, which was something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. And it was a a series of events kind of happened in perfect order. I've been wanting to have a second place on the beach for a long time. And I've been saying, it's not the right time. It's not the right time. I need to be patient, right? I've been delaying the gratification of the outcome until I felt like financially and then from a schedule standpoint, professionally, that everything was going to be in order. And I was down there, some dominoes fell into perfect order, and there was this opportunity to to rent what is a dream home of mine that really just fell in my lap. And so I took it. I got back to Arizona and I was sitting in my office, my first day back in my office, and I was just reflecting on where I'm at. And I had this really incredible experience because I realized I am living the exact life I dreamed of years ago. And it was this humbling experience. And I thought to myself, how did I get here? You know, it was like for years and years and years, it felt like I was working my ass off with very little result and just grinding it out 10, 12, 14 hour days, five, six, seven days a week, just working, working, working. And then all of a sudden, here I am. And on one hand, you know, it's like it happened fast. But on the other hand, it took 8, 10, 14 years to get here. But the reason why I tell you this story is the one thing I'm most proud of is all I've done for the last 14 years is show up every day and give every day the best that I can. And some days are better than others. Some days I'm tired and exhausted and my energy and my effort is shit. But I did the best that I could that day. And other days I come into the office, I'm fucking fired up. I'm going, my intensity is super high. Everybody's like, what's up with Mink today? He's on, a, he's on one, right? Like we're all gonna go through good days and bad days. We're all gonna go through seasons of life where we feel uh, like things are taking too long or we're not where we wanna be. But if you can just commit to the process and you can do it every day and show up every day and just give it, the best that you can that day, and then try to be a little bit better tomorrow, I promise you guys, if you stick with it, if you have a long-term vision, you're gonna get there. And this is part of the reason why I wanted to have this conversation with you guys today is because that moment I had, I'm recording this on a Friday, and I had that moment on, on Monday. I got back from Hawaii, I rolled off the red eye right into the office, and I was sitting in my office in between meetings, and I was like, wow, how did I get here? And the answer was I just did daily consistent action 
over the last 14 years of my life. And since I started Live Bearded, it's been eight years of intense focus on what I want. And, and now I'm living life on my terms. And that's what I want for you guys. So you've got to follow these steps if you really want to help build a foundation that's going to help you get to the next level, which leads me to number three. And number three might be one of the most important ones. Number three is this. It's who, not how. You see, so often in life we think, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I create the business? How do I find the, the relationship? We get stuck in the tyranny of how. And ultimately, one of the biggest lessons I've learned in life is we never have a how problem. We always have a who problem. And the, the, the truth is, if you're not where you want to be, one of the biggest reasons why is you're not the type of person that's capable of creating that result. And you need to ask yourself this question, who do I need to become to create the result that I want? Ultimately, who we become is going to be the number one determining factor in the life that we live. I was on a coaching call a couple days ago and they said, as a founder, you are the company's greatest asset and the company's greatest liability. And who you are and how you show up and the level of skill that you have and the leadership capacity that you uh, create within yourself, that is the, the governor of your potential and the business's success. And so who are we gonna become? Now, in this category of who, there's three particular areas of our life that are gonna determine the results that we have. Okay, the skills that you develop as an individual are going to determine the success that you have. The character traits that you possess are going to determine the type of person that you become. And then ultimately, the beliefs that you have about what's possible for you are going to be also one of those indicators. Now, I told you before, right? If you have a recipe, you can create any recipe or any uh, meal, you can bake the cake in the exact way and make it as delicious as anybody else. If you know the ingredients, the proportions, and in what order to mix them. I would make an argument that the ingredients of success all come down to who you are. And that's the skills that you have, the character traits that you possess, and the beliefs that you have about what's possible for you. And so, this question about who do you have to be exists in this area. And so many times I've stepped back from a situation in my life where I didn't get the result, where I failed. And I said, okay, what skills am I missing in this moment? Right? As the CEO of Live Bearded, we went through multiple iterations of growth and every situation I've had to step back and say, who do I need to be? What skills do I need to take the company to the next level? And there's there's, all, there's hard skills and there's soft skills that all of us must develop in life. And I would say the, the hard skills, you know, you have to decide what are those for you. Do you want to be a stockbroker? Do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to have the skills of a copywriter or a content creator, right? There's the skill side of things. The hard skill, honestly, is very easy. You just figure out what you want to learn and what skills you need to create the result that you want and you go acquire those. Right, Soft skills are a little different because that's more like our communication, our ability to build rapport, our charisma, our communication skills, right? Can we persuade? Can we think critically? Can we problem solve? All of these things are critical. But if you want to have more success in your life, it starts with you. Who do you need to become? And the first part to say is, okay, what skills do I need? From there, you have to determine what type of human is capable of creating the results that you want. If you're introverted and you wanna go make a shitload of money as a salesperson and you're gonna to have to make tons of sales calls and you're gonna deal with tons of rejection, you're probably gonna set yourself up for failure, right? If you don't have the character traits that are required to create the skills that produce the results, you need to develop those character traits. And here's the deal, character traits are completely learnable. You can learn to be more focused. You can learn to be more disciplined. You can learn to be more educated. You can be the type of person that develops the character trait that rather than clicking on the TV at night, you open a book. 
then rather than talking shit on social media, you get on YouTube and you watch videos, okay? But the character traits that you possess are kind of the building blocks to the skills that you're gonna create. And then you wrap all of that in belief. The belief about, let me say it this way, you are who you believe you are. You live the life that you believe you can live. You have the relationship that you believe you can have. The beliefs that we have about ourselves and about what's possible for us is ultimately the determining factor of our potential. We will never out-earn our beliefs. We will never out-believe or we'll, we'll never have a greater level of potential than we believe for ourselves. So as you're thinking about how do I create more success, it's who do you need to become, what skills, character traits, and beliefs must I possess and then you just go out and be the type of person that becomes that individual that builds that success. The fourth rule is why not what? So often we are so focused on what we want that we lose sight of why we actually want it. And there's a really beautiful quote that says, if you have a strong enough why, you can endure any how, any what, any challenges, any obstacles, Right. Ultimately, at the end of the day, why we want something is the num is probably the most important reason, and and the the determining factor of if we're going to get there. Because if we have a strong enough why, we're going to be willing to work through the bullshit, work through the pain, overcome the failure, you know, and grow through the moments that stop most people from actually achieving the end result. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. You've got to know why you want it. And you've got to then use that why to fuel you through the journey, through the ups and the downs and the challenges and the failures. So you got to know what you want, but more importantly, why you want it. All right. And the fifth and final rule is failure is required for success. You know, if you have an aversion to failure, if you're not willing to look dumb and to fall on your face and to fail, you're never going to have the opportunity to be successful. One of my favorite sayings is the road to success is paved with failure. I believe success and failure are two sides of the same coin. And oftentimes we hear these amazing success stories, right? Whether it's an athlete, an entrepreneur, a celebrity, we hear these success stories that are glamorized and we hear about how amazing and incredible they are. But what they don't tell you is the only way they got there was by failing more than anyone else. See, the only way you learn how to become successful is by failing over and over and over. And I would suggest that we learn far more from our failures than we do from our successes. And if you see someone that's had success in any area of their life, it's because they've had the courage to fail over and over and learn through those moments. It's as I say in the intro, you know, the only reason why I'm here is because I've learned how to turn my failures into lessons and I've used those lessons to create life on my terms. And so I would say maybe the most important part of this process, they're all important, right? But our relationship with failure is critical. And I would suggest I would uh, advise you to see failure as nothing more than a lesson. If you can see the failures as getting you one step closer to the successes, then the goal becomes how do I fail faster? Because the faster we learn what not to do, the faster we'll get where we're going. And ultimately, I think your end result, your success in life is going to come down to how well you fail, how much you learn through your failures, and then how you're able to apply the lessons from failure to create more success in the future. One of my favorite quotes is from John Wooden, and he says, success is never final. Failure is never fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. And ultimately, if we want to create life on our terms, because that's my definition of success, very simply, is doing what you know you need to do, doing it when you need to do it, and creating life on your terms. I think that's what we all want, ultimately. We want to spend our time with the people we love, doing the things that we enjoy. That's what creating life on our terms is about. And if you understand that the most important part 
of creating life on your terms is not the success or the failure, but the courage to continue. That's where we're going to be able to really truly create the life that we want. So to recap for you guys real fast, five rules. Number one, you've got to have a system for success. Number two, you've got to focus on the process, not the outcome. Number three, it's who you have to become, not how to create it. Number four, it's why you want it, not what you want. And finally, number five, you've got to love the process of failing because on your journey, you're going to fail over and over and over again. And if you can do that, I guarantee you, you're going to start to move from where you are to where you want to go. And you're going to have the opportunity to do what I just did, which was achieve a lifelong goal and then pause for a moment and reflect back and ask yourself, how did I get here? And the answer is going to be simple. You did these five, three, these five things. That's my prayer for you. I hope that this was helpful. If you got value from this, will you just do me one favor? Will you share it with someone who needs to hear it and tell them about the podcast? That's the only thing I'll ever ask of you guys. I hope you have an amazing day. I hope to hear and talk to you guys soon.